Hello and welcome to another Wobble Pod podcast for the year 2021. Today is a special treat for me. As a presenter for a Wobble Pod, I do topics that I think are interesting, but what I think are more interesting for our community and listeners. Today is no different except for the fact that through it all, good or bad, I am born and bred on the lands of Mullumbimba, a Wobbacal Nova Castrian, red and blue Newcastle Knights. And to have the privilege to meet uh, who you connect to as a fan and supporter is, a, is an exciting and honour for me. So today I'm in the presence of a man. Can I say that? Yeah. <laughs> yeah? Oh, you see, he's agreeing with me too. Someone, uh, someone who reminds me of a younger Rod Smith. Uh, a man who has shaped his body and that looks like it's been carved out of a block of granite. Nah. Believe it or not, I used, to, I used to look like that. Hey, hey, Helen. <laughs> Helen's our camera person. And she's grinning away like anything there. So today, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the floor for a wobble pod, the Newcastle Knights legend, Gem. Because that's if you know him, that's what you call him. Shibasaki, how are you, my brother? Yeah, good. Thanks for having me. No problem, no problem. How you been handling things? How's the training going? Yeah, training's going good now. We're um, coming up to trials um, at the end of the week. And um, I think everyone's been waiting a long time for that. Or, well short time for for us but like because we only had a short preseason, but a long time for most but yeah, yeah we're excited can't wait so when do, when do you start training like you, what's the normal thing you get knocked out you've got knocked out first round of the semis yeah how long do you get a break uh, we get about I think 8 weeks 8 weeks 8 weeks uh, for like a minimum yeah 7 to 8 weeks And um, but if you're a bit older and you've had a bit more pre-seasons under your belt yeah you get about 9 9 or more um, or, or if you've obviously if you played in the origin recently at the oh, end of yeah. the year you yeah. get longer so I'm uh, uh, pushing well, 50 this year how many weeks would they give me <laughs> 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 so look you've been you come down uh, from Queensland you've yeah. been in Newcastle now for probably just a year or over a year how are you finding it down this way no I love it here eh? it's um I really didn't expect anything of it because eh? um being up up in New, uh, up in Brisbane, yeah. um, I just really thought of like the big cities like Brisbane, and Sydney, and never thought like I knew Newcastle had a team, but you just wouldn't think about yeah. like, the town as, as itself. Yeah. And being here now, I love it. Eh? I wouldn't I wouldn't want to leave. So yeah, <laughs> love it now. I've been here for a year. So it's great during the summer. Mm. The beaches, the beaches, are hitting good. the beaches much. Yeah, yeah, fair bit when it's good good day. Not worrying, yeah. a, not having to worry about the stingers. Nah, no, 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 not have to worry <laughs> about them. So no, nah, it's, it's it's good. And crocs up Townsville. Yeah, right, crocodiles up there. So they got um, even like shark nets and that there. So we swim in that. So you don't really swim up in, in the salt water up in Townsville. You really go to creeks and that. So um, that's a more in thing to do up there. So yeah, Townsville born. Uh, they just had the Indigenous All Stars in Townsville. Um, what do you think of the game? And you, you couldn't get back? No. Nah, well, um, I thought it was a really good game actually. Um, Especially with having the two cultures and that, I really like the um, the war cries from both cultures. Uh, that that gives me goosebumps yeah. even now thinking about it. Um, but no, nah, I didn't end up getting to go back because um, we had a another trial and um, a big promo day out at Cessnock against the Cessnock Cessnock Gawainers, I think they're called yep. uh, the local club. So yep. um, we were tied up there um, supporting some of the younger boys playing in the trials. And um, just watched it on the phone, really. And when I got home, I just watched it on TV. Did you play against the Cowboys in Townsville last year? Um, nah, nah, nah. We played them down here. I was going to say, yeah, they, when you play them. up there... Oh, yeah, we did play them. Oh, not in, like in a, in a normal game. Yeah, yeah, we did. Yeah, we played them up well, there. Even with the Broncos, you got to get a lot of family passes. Yeah, yeah. That's a bit <laughs> hassle way when it comes to tickets and stuff like that when we back go home. home but, You'd have um, every mob, everyone yeah. ringing up, wouldn't you? Yeah, that was like, heaps, of, heaps of tickets. But heaps of the boys that we, when we go up and play there anyway, don't have much family that live up there. So yeah. I just get their tickets. So yeah, cool. It's all good. So, your, your first name and your surname. Um, so your family background is Torres Strait. Mm -hmm. Japanese and Malay. Mm -hmm. So, how does that all mesh together? Um, well, back in those days, um, a lot of the um, Malaysians and Japanese um, people uh, migrated to the Torres Straits for pearl diving. Yep. So, um, they did a lot of that. That was a big thing back then. So, um, and obviously, they just stayed there after that, after they did the pearl diving. And yeah, so my first name's Malaysian and then my last name's Japanese. So, yeah. <laughs> Do you get much uh, comments on that? I suppose you probably get a lot of people mm. saying, oh, that's an unusual surname. What do most people say? Do they say it's Japanese? Because yeah. it does sound yeah, very yeah. Japanese. They, they, um, 
they that because they, they hear the first name and then they then they just um they just mucks with their head for the last name so um they reckon my last name's more harder to pronounce than my first name and I, I, for myself i reckon it's the other way around i agree yeah. i agree gem yeah <laughs> <laughs> um now 2020 covid nothing like we'd ever seen in our lifetime mm-hmm. um it changed everything um and for the nrl to work they put all the, you guys into bubbles mm. uh we could out we still were able to get out and adventure around how was it for for you guys i mean mentally physically how how was being in that situation well for myself i thought um i didn't have any sort of problems with it because it sort of kept me disciplined yep. with my diet and stuff like that as well so but it wasn't too bad like we got to um go do grocery shopping like the essential stuff like go to the f- put fuel in your car and um if we wanted some ta- um some t- food we had to get takeaway but we couldn't really like wait in the shops for the takeaway we yeah. if you had a partner or someone they could go and get it for you and stuff like that so um but i didn't really seem to go out and eat eat out much as much as a sort of just went groceries and cooked at home i didn't have a problem with because i had my playstation and wi-fi and stuff like that so <laughs> a lot of netflix <clears throat> but I probably watched nearly every every movie yeah. there is in the, on Netflix, but yeah. I didn't mind it, so it was okay. all good. So when it came to the shopping and that, um, mm-hmm. h- how did you get your food, night? So I, I, we're allowed to do like we're allowed to go get the essential stuff. So yeah. we're allowed to go to the shops to go um, get our food. And did ourselves. you have to be masked masked up? Yeah, yeah. When you went masked out, masked up like yeah. just normal and like carry um, hand sanitizer and stuff with us, but. I think it it be it was best that if you had a partner or someone that um, that doesn't live yeah. in the bubble with us, they can go and get that. They'd rather that them to go get the stuff as well. Yeah. But if it's an essential and you have to go get it, then then we're allowed to do it. So yeah, it wasn't too bad. Now, Warbegal Primary mm-hmm. Health Organisation here in Newcastle. So I'd like to talk about some food. I'd like to hear you know because you're a professional sports person. Is food planning harder or easier for you? When I first started, um, I sort of found it hard for my dieting and sort of just planning my food because I was just used to eating in bulk yeah. back home at, with my family and stuff like that and um, like eating rice every night <laughs> um, yeah. and just not, like having like coconut curry chicken or just the foods you wouldn't eat like as an athlete. So I sort of just knew how to make like those simple stuff like that and yeah. um, spaghetti bolognese and stuff like that. But as I got older, um, there's other stuff out there that that that's nice and you could try it, like differently. Like for for instance, right now, like I'm really just stuck on frozen veggies and rice and steak. Like that's healthy enough for me. So at least you got to have your good portions of veggies, yeah, carbs like your rice. And protein, so that's steak. I choose steak. So, are you finding a difference within yourself, uh, physically, by eating more veggies and and fruit and stuff? Yeah, yeah. I, I feel different when I'm training, and I feel different just walking around, um, uh, like just anywhere, like just where I go. Like I just feel good about myself, just yeah. for eating good, and and I just feel good on the field when I'm playing. So, yeah. Do you have any um food that you have? Oh, so that's my next question. Um, game day is your is your meal plan and meal preparation or and eating different for game days? Um, it depends on really when we play. Like, so if we play during like at lunch, like during the like during the day or late arvo, I'll have a um, sort of big brekkie and that'll sort of carry me out. And I just snack snack really until the thing. But if we play like eight o'clock at night or something, I'll have a big brekkie and a big lunch and then yeah. just snack on the way through. But um, the night before is when I usually carb up with your pasta and stuff like that. But that sometimes that usually carries me through to brekkie. So, yeah. Have you ever in your career eaten like you know probably an hour or two before a game when you know you probably shouldn't? You've gone on the field full stomach. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, or I've sometimes like I've left it too long. You know, like I haven't eaten anything because I'm worried that oh, I might yeah. I might screw yeah, up yeah. or something. So. During the game, I'm starving. Like <laughs> half time comes, and I was thinking, man, I can't wait to eat a, eh? because like you eat a big brekkie, but then you think, oh, I don't want to eat lunch because then I'll I'll be yeah. too full to play. So yeah, my, I think it's more more the opposite. Like I don't eat enough on game day sometimes, sometimes because I'm yeah. scared. But yeah, <laughs> but now now being 
being smart about it, I, I know a lot better now. So, so on the professional side of seeing with the training and, and as you said with nutrition, a lot of our mob, you know, um, especially when you get those desert western out 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 more western, we're skinny legged. You know, <laughs> you look at me, you know, big torso, mostly muscle, but um, you know, skinny legged, weight training. I mean, I, there's a lot of our I, I see now on on Facebook and that. A lot of our younger mob, especially around here, are really starting to get in the weights. Is at what age did you start getting into weights, and did you find it help with your career? Yeah, so I started getting into weights probably around grade twelve when I was seventeen and stuff like that. That's when like um, I sort of really got into getting weights because I needed to get bigger to play some of the um, like bigger boys yeah. down south, down in Brisbane or something. If I'd go down for like for school boys footy or something like that you got to be a little bit bigger so i think weight training is yeah, pretty important so the, um, the bigger you are the less chance you get get hurt i guess but um you can still be still be small and yeah. and still be really gunned you know what i mean so but you don't really need it but i just started when i was in year 12 really so cool um talent is this something i i well, i'd like to have conversation or debates about with people talent versus hard work which one wins if talent if you've got someone who's really mm. talented but they don't commit to training as hard and then you've got someone who's probably not as talented but they train in their butt off yeah in the long run who's going to win um, I reckon hard work is going to win in the long run because um, being in like the systems I've been in um, talent only gets you in the door but for yeah. you to stay stay in and be around every, all the top gun players, they're not just gun because of their talent. They're they're gun because of the hard work that they've put in every day. So, um, yeah, hard work beats beats talent any day. In your in your lifetime, short lifetime, um, have you seen where you know mob or maybe even other mates where you've just gone, man, they're a freakish player, but just didn't have that commitment and probably back at home or somewhere now just playing in the local league. Yeah, yeah, I've got heaps of there's no 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 a couple of boys that just sort of like um sort of ha- like not sort of like they had the hard work but I think it's just that not sticking like to it as in like they didn't see any progress or something like that it sort of like died down and then just sort of killed them but like if you if you're working hard and you don't see any pr- progression it like you yeah. guarantee you, it'll hit it'll you get there one day so just like that's what I probably learned is to stay stay in it even though that it hasn't like come earlier that so some some fellas get um get stuff earlier yeah. than others yeah. so yeah. um if you just stay with it even though nothing's happening for yourself then I reckon yeah. it'll come soon so the reason yeah. I ask you that question because I have seen even here in Newcastle a lot of mm-hmm. young fellas that talent plus yeah yeah you know, by the time they're 14 15 you know they're they already look like first graders, but mm. you know, they're just because just of their age. Mm. But by the time they're 18, they've gotten themselves in trouble, yeah. probably alcohol, you know, wanting to go to parties too much. And then, you know, you run into them a year or two later and they're just playing in the local comp. And you're thinking, man, this kid should have been playing for New South Wales and Australia easy. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, um, yeah, that's what I was asking about no, that. That's what I'm thinking, yeah. Right, here's a couple of quick questions hardest built player in the nights who's the hardest built player built like as in like probably just hard as a rock if you hit him your hand will break oh Connor Connor yeah. Connor Watson yeah he's pretty strong eh we just come from a gym session and he was he looks small he was pr- shifting some pretty big like tim. I'm 50 this year I think I could smash him yeah but you reckon he's... He's like one of those fellas where you, like you hit them and then you, you like he like you feel sore after from hitting him. So no, I did see him with his shirt off and yeah, I was he... I was a little bit man struck. <laughs> yes, especially the shaved chest that really got me. But anyway, we'll keep moving. <laughs> <laughs> Fastest player in the night at the moment. Ooh. Ooh, I don't know. It'd be I don't know. It'd be, it's close. Um, Who's it out of? I reckon. Uh, Anari's pretty quick. Uh, Anari Tua. KP's pretty quick. Where's Edric? About 10th. Yeah, <laughs> Edric's <laughs> up there. Bradman's up there. Is he? Bradman Best, yeah, he's up there. 
Wow. So I mean, he's so fast. solid. He doesn't look like... I mean, you can see he's got pace like off the mark, but... Yeah. Yeah, yeah. he's pretty quick. Oh, yeah. wow. Okay, cool. <laughs> Slowest night player. Slowest. Oh. I don't know. It'd probably be myself. <laughs> really? <laughs> nah. I don't know. <laughs> I'm not too sure. Who's the trickiest player in the night? Trickiest? Yeah, like, you know, someone that just does freakish little things. Ooh. You know when you... You growing up and you had that one cousin or whatever and they were just flicking balls around you thinking, how do they do that, you know, or just doing things? Yeah, it'd probably be KP. Yeah? For, for me, it'd probably be KP, yeah. Yeah, he, he reminds me a bit of myself when I was... Yeah. But anyway, <laughs> besides yourself, which Knights player should we be watching out for this year? <laughs> um, I reckon... Anyone you think might make a bit of a name for themselves this year? Um, That's not so known now, and if, if they get the chance... If they get the chance, I reckon. Ooh. Yeah, I reckon that um, Dom Young. Yeah. He's a new recruit for us. Um, we I seen him play on the weekend first time, and um, yeah, he's he's outstanding. He's a big framed fella, and um, what position? He's a center wing. He's oh, yeah. um, he's probably just as tall as Edric. And um, yeah, it's just yeah, he's a strong thing. Oh, is he from England? He's from That's England, far. yeah. Yeah, he's is one of our our new recruits. So I'm um, keen to see how he'd go with um with all the big boys and our old boys. So um, yeah. Gim Shibasaki, I'd like to say thank you very much for this uh, interview. As I said, uh, as a, a local boy, born and bred, um, a diehard Knights fan. I was there in the early days and you know when Wally Lewis and all that come through as I was probably 18 I think when when it all started so yeah um, and I'm still still getting along to the game so it's a pleasure to have you here and, and hear your thoughts and on uh, on health and, and also being what it takes to be a professional sportsman so thank you for coming in no thank you for having me so what do you want to really say about Connor? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, bro.